So yeah, uh, let me quickly introduce myself again. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft, and I'm also a maintainer of the Gatekeeper open source project. And in this presentation, I'm going to talk about how we can use Gatekeepers to secure your Istio surface mesh. Perfect. And I'm uh, Mathieu Benoit. I'm DevRel uh, engineer at Google, uh, more specifically, and focused on Anthos and GK in general. Very glad to be here. Hello, everyone. So in this presentation, I'm going to quickly go through what Gatekeeper is. And Mathieu is going to talk about how we can use Gatekeeper to enforce Istio best practice. And he's going to show a quick demo. And last but not least, we're going to show you guys some resources you can check out after the presentation and Q&A if there's any questions. So let's talk about policies. What are policies? Policies are a set of rules that governs the behavior of the software system. For example, as a Kubernetes administrators, you only want your developers to deploy container images from Google Container Registry, or you don't want to anyone to deploy a load balancer to your clusters because of cluster network lockdown. Having policy in place is especially useful when security, compliance, and software supply chain are top priorities to your organization. Without policy, your software system can turn into a wild west. There are two essential areas to a proper policy management system, policy evaluation and enforcement. We need a common interface for administrators to write and deploy policies, as well as a unified way to enforce them in a scalable fashion. So how do we write powerful policies? Enforcing them and enforcing them from scratch. Well, luckily there are tons of great solutions out there. And in, the, in this slide, I'm gonna talk about the CNCF open policy agent project, as well as the Gatekeeper project, and showing you how you can leverage them to secure your Istio surface mesh purely based on policies. So open policy agent or OPA is a declarative general purpose policy engine where surfaces can offload their policy de decisions. With OPA, instead of embedding policies within individual microservices, developers can write standalone policies and let OPA make policy decisions. The project graduated from CNCF in 2021, so it's part of the cloud native ecosystem it is battle tested by a lot of companies like Google and Microsoft. To evaluate policies, Open also provides a well-defined policy language called Rego. This allows uh, system administrators and developers to make visible incremental changes to your organization's policies, as well as making policies declarative. All you have to do is write some Rego policies and tell your system, okay, I wanna enforce this set of policy via OPA. Last but not least, it is context aware, meaning it will work in any environment from the cloud to on-premise and bare metal servers, or even your local environment. On the right, we have a simple flow diagram to describe how you can layer your microservice system with OPA. First, you have the incoming requests uh, to your surface. Before processing the request, the surface queries OPA for policy decision making. OPA will then go through a list of policies in the storage, and at the same time, it can query additional data outside of the scope of the request for more meaningful policy decisions. Once OPA make a decision, it will send the response back to the service. And as you can see, it's very general purpose, and you can fit OPA into almost any software system. Uh, next, let's look at uh, what the relationship is between OPA and Gatekeeper. So what is Gatekeeper? Gatekeeper, on the other hand, is a Kubernetes admission controller that extends OPA, and it is responsible for policy enforcement based on the evaluation results from OPA. Uh, what I mean by an admission controller is that it intercepts admission requests to the Kubernetes API server, and uh, this is really powerful because it gives us an opportunity for us to evaluate the objects that we're trying to admit into our clusters against a set of policies in the clusters using purely uh, OPA. And we can enforce different actions if certain objects violates our organization's policies. Uh, in addition to this, Gatekeeper has tons of out of policy related features like mutations and external data. Uh, even though they're out of this presentation scope, I encourage you to check them out since they're really powerful. 
Uh, on the right, you ha we have the same diagram from the last slide, but let's try to fit this model into Kubernetes. Uh, we'll start with the requests. For Kubernetes, a request can either initiate it through kubectl, CI CD pipeline, or even an uh, API call from a Kubernetes client. It doesn't really matter because all requests will eventually route it to the Kubernetes API server. Because Gatekeeper is an admission controller, the Kubernetes API server will convert the request into uh, admission requests before sending it to Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper receives the admission requests, then it will find a set of policies that matches the resource and ask open policy agents to help evaluate the policy for us. Uh, because regular policies aren't part of Kubernetes first party resource, we can represent them as Kubernetes CRDs, which I'm gonna talk about that in a later slide. The policy might wanna reference resources in Kubernetes. So Gatekeeper also introduced primitives to allow the policy authors to inject additional objects of interest when evaluating policies. After evaluating policies, open policy agents will send the result back to Gatekeeper. Then Gatekeeper will make the decision of whether we're admitting the requests in the form in the form of admission response back to the API server. So to summarize, if a user wants to create or modify a resource that violates your policies, we have the ability to deny the requests. With that being said, let's look at an example Gatekeeper policy. There are two parts when it comes to policy developments with Gatekeeper. One is the set of rules that you want to enforce, and second is the actual enforcement of the rules. These two areas can be represented by two Gatekeeper CRDs, constraint templates and constraints. An uh, analogy I like to use when comparing constraint templates and constraint is that uh, constraint templates is like a class in object-oriented programming. It's like the blueprint for creating and defining policies within your Kubernetes clusters, whereas constraint creates the policy instances where you can have different parameters and enforcement actions. So let's talk about constraint template first. Constraint template is a gatekeeper CRD that contains the schema of the constraints, as well as uh, the regular policy that you want to enforce. Uh, we have this concept of parameterization where we allow developers to parameterize their policies to maximize code reuse. Uh, it uses the open API schema. So it's the same validations you use when creating CRDs in Kubernetes. So this should be very familiar with CRD authors. So let's look at the second part of the constraint templates. The second part of the constraint templates uh, contains the actual policy written in regular language. Regal might be confusing at first because it doesn't flow like a regular programming language, but basically Regal sees every line in the policies as an assertion statement, and it will exit prematurely if the assertion is false. And in each policy, there, we expect a function called violations. This function will return true if all the assertion statements within the functions are true. So what this policy uh, in this slide is saying is that any Kubernetes surface with the port names uh, that does not have a prefix that, that is within the list of allowed prefix we defined is a violation to our policy. This is especially useful in an Istio surface mesh because it requires the surface port names to have a to have the surface protocol as the prefix. This policy will block the deployment of any Kubernetes surface where the port name is not named properly. So next, let's look at what constraint is. Through our Gatekeepers Constraint API, you can create an instance of the policy based on the constraint templates and uh, specify the name of the policy in the kind view. In the constraint, you can specify a number of things. First is an enforcement action. You can choose either deny the admission request or you can dry run the policy so that you can check out how many resources within your clusters are violating this particular policies before having uh, further actions. Second is the match. We can make sure the policy is only evaluated when a certain types of resource is being emitted to the API server. This way we can avoid policy evaluation on resources that we don't care about. Then you can define the parameters. As I mentioned earlier, parameterizing your policies will encourage the reuse of policies. Last but not least, you can also include or exclude a list of namespaces. So you can have fine grind control on where to enforce your policies. For example, you might not want to enforce this policy on the kube system namespace. So you might be wondering, what if you want to write policies that involves multiple objects? So in Gatekeeper, there's this also this concept called referential policies. 
where users can define a configuration that tells Gatekeeper to sync various Kubernetes objects into an in-memory cache. And this cache then becomes available for policy authors to query against. This way, if you want to write more powerful and meaningful policies that access Kubernetes resource other than the objects that are being admitted to the clusters, you can access them through the cache instead of querying them through the API server every time. In this example, we're telling Gatekeeper to cache all namespace objects as well as Istio CRDs like peer authentication and authorization policies. So every policy from this point on, if it ever needs to access these objects, they can easily do so in their regular policy by accessing the cache. Uh, before I hand it back to Matthew, I also like to quickly touch on a Gatekeeper CLI project called Gator, which allows developers to write unit tests against your constraint templates and constraints without spinning up uh, clusters. This is super beneficial because policy authors can make mistakes when writing regular policies and having unit tests in place will allow us to have some sort of test coverage and catch any bugs within the policies. And with that being said, I'll hand it back to Matthew. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ernest. Um, so with all of that said, uh, in the context of Gatekeeper and the constraint and constraint template, let's have um, a bit of background and context here uh, about how we could leverage Gatekeeper uh, and those policies, uh, again, in the context of Istio. Uh, here, it's a, a simplification of a setup. <clears throat> you may uh, or may not be familiar with Istio, so uh, let me go through quickly this setup because that's the one we are going to leverage. At the very bottom, that's the control plane of Istio, Istio D, uh, Pilot, um, also uh, well known with a uh, different name. Uh, at the top of this uh, diagram, uh, you could see a flow uh, from left to right. And on the left, the end user will be able to reach and ping a public endpoint uh, exposed by an ingress gateway. So here you are not yet in the mesh, but by eating and uh, reaching this ingress gateway, uh, you are now entering into the mesh. So this ingress gateway is um, uh, that's one of the, the model and architecture, uh, again, you may be familiar with, where this ingress gateway is uh, exposing a public endpoint. Then uh, routing uh, rules uh, will be in place to route the traffic uh, to other services within this mesh. Um, and from here, for example, you could guarantee that you have uh, best practices in place, governance in place, and security in place. One of them is MTLS, to have a strict MTLS and uh, encryption uh, when services are talking to each other. Uh, you, could have police, you could have policy enforcement where you could have rules with fine-grained uh, rules. Um, again, when one service A could talk to service B on which port for which operation. Um, so that's kind of granular and best practice you, you may have in place. Uh, in your organization, in your clusters, and in your mesh. So we are going to illustrate uh, this setup. Um, and here, what we want to do is having a, a, a journey, um, a journey where, uh, as a platform admin and Istio operator or services operator, how I could guarantee that my developer, my apps operator or service operator are deploying the Kubernetes manifest in a proper way uh, according to the rules of my organization, right? How I could guarantee that. So we are going to have a flow here. The first set of two rules and policies that you could see at the top is how I guarantee that the sidecar injection is respected as soon as someone is deploying a new namespace, for example. Uh, and people are not bypassing, for example, the sidecar injection annotation with a specific pod. That's the first two set of rules we would like to guarantee here. Then another one is how I could guarantee again as a platform admin service operator that uh, the traffic within my mesh is encrypted end to end, right? So um, strict MTLS, three rules and constraints we are going to have. First one in the Istio system uh, to be able to have the strict MTLS for the entire mesh. And then we are going to have two constraints to guarantee that no one is bypassing or overriding this behavior. If you are familiar with Istio, uh, you may know that a peer authentication object could be 
uh, set and deployed by namespace by overriding the behavior of the default one in Istio system. Here we are prohibiting people putting that uh, and bypassing and overriding the default behavior. Another aspect, uh, service per service, uh, so on a, on a more granular aspect, people could deploy a destination rule to bypass this strict MTLS. We are prohibiting with a constraint this behavior as well. Another one to add more security, we should have authorization policies in our mesh. So we will illustrate that uh, uh, to finish. We will uh, see a little demo uh, as well with service port naming. Um, and actually with that, you could grab the GitHub repository uh, that we will share with you. It's public. You have all the recipes and the code that you could reuse, the manifest you could reuse. So we hope uh, you are going to enjoy uh, uh, this part. So um, what we want to do here is uh, actually uh, switching to um, my, my shell here, my console here. And um, what I want to show you is uh, a setup I have already in place. Um, so I have a cluster. Uh, it's in GCP. It's a GKE cluster. It could be an AKS cluster. It could be an OpenShift cluster. Uh, pick and choose your, bring your own cluster. Uh, um, this demo will work. Um, so with a cluster of three nodes here, uh, I already installed uh, Istio um, in this cluster and as well as Gatekeeper, right? So in the GitHub repository uh, we are going to share, there is all the uh, information about that. And here what you could see is uh, I have the latest and greatest version of Istio locally as well in my cluster and I have already 13 proxies. Uh, so I have already deployed uh, two uh, namespaces. So you remember the Ingress Gateway? I have already deployed this Ingress Gateway in the Istio Ingress namespace. I have already uh, a sample apps. If you are familiar with Book Info, that's working here. It's an online boutique, simple app where we have 10 microservices, gRPC uh, microservices, talking to each other with one Redis database. So it's a sample apps deployed in the online boutique. And that's why now we see uh, this kind of 13 uh, proxy. So again, uh, that's my setup um, already in place to save some time for the demo. Again, online boutique here. And I have in the uh, history ingress, my ingress gateway. So all good on that aspect for the setup, right? Um, the other aspect of the setup, uh, we are going through um, a, a series of commands to illustrate how we could here locally, and it's in this uh, GitHub repository, uh, we are going to deploy the different constraint, right? Uh, and associated constraint template. We will then uh, deploy the config that Ernest mentioned about referential constraint, um, which is a config to help Gatekeeper uh, and helping us uh, writing uh, more powerful uh, policies and constraint template here. I have already the uh, Ingress Gateway, like I mentioned, Deployment Service Account Service and Istio Gateway. Uh, this guy is exposing the public endpoint. I haven't yet deployed the authorization policy. I will explain where and when we will need that. In the Istio system, I haven't yet, so I didn't yet um, deploy anything. We will see those two uh, resources later. And I have online boutique, the sample app with a virtual service attached to the gateway of the Ingress gateway. Um, and I haven't yet uh, deployed the authorization policy. Like Ernest mentioned, there is also this test subfolder where you will have some gator capability. I won't go too much in detail here. So that's a setup. So now, uh, just to make sure uh, in my cluster, um, just to show you these two commands are here to tell me, is there any constraint template in my cluster? No. Is there any constraint? No. So that's the beginning of the demo. And uh, just before jumping into a series of kubectl apply, um, I'm grabbing here the public IP of my ingress gateway. And like you could see, um, actually, uh, my online boutique is up and running. So that's the application. I could do some shopping here uh, with a database, with this database for the cache and the cart. So all good on that aspect. Now, what I want to do is actually uh, deploys a series of two constraint template and constraint. I won't show you the detail of this constraint and constraint template for having a flow and a customer journey here 
uh, a service operator journey platform and uh, journey uh, about how I could ensure best practice with these two and secure my setup, right? So I'm deploying here uh, the constraint template. Again, um, any namespace should have a label uh, for cycle injection and no pod should be able to override this behavior and this annotation. So if I look at what has been deployed, I have two constraint template just mentioned and the, the associated constraint here. And Gatekeeper has already evaluated if I have something currently in my cluster violating those rules and those policies. And I can see zero, zero. So all good and that's okay on purpose and as expect, expected, I properly deploy the online boutique like you have seen, there is proxies injection. Uh, so the label is on the namespace, same for uh, gateway. And I haven't override um, any pod uh, for this sidecar injection. So uh, what we could do here is um, having this test. Um, here I will create um, a namespace named test without any label, right? So uh, here, like uh, Ernest mentioned, we are going to hit the uh, Kubernetes API and Gatekeeper uh, in the cluster will be able to say, no, I deny this request or yes, I accept this request based on policies on, for example, in this example, for the namespace resource, right? So either you are doing CICD pipeline with Jenkins, Azure DevOps, uh, Cloud Build, Cloud Deploy, uh, GitHub Action, uh, and you are doing kubectl apply to deploy in your cluster or other alternative could be GitOps approach with Flux CD, Argo CD, config sync. Um, either way, uh, at the end, you will have this, uh, this error message, which is good because I guarantee that any namespace should have an injection um, label, right? And here, that's what it's telling me, that you must provide a label, which is is to injection. So first uh, check, I'm uh, very, um, API as a platform admin and services uh, operator here. What I want to do is a second series of uh, policies and constraint and constraint template. Before doing that, um, again, the referential constraint will allow me and Gatekeeper to uh, reference some other object. So uh, here, what if you remember the second series of um, of bundle of policies we would like to illustrate is MTLS strict. The first rule and constraint will guarantee that in Istio system, we have, um, uh, we have this uh, peer authentication, strict MTLS. So I'm deploying this um, constraint template and constraint, but here we are evaluating a namespace, namespace Istio system, and we are referencing an object peer authentication. So the first config file deployed here is um, uh, allow me, allows me actually to have this behavior, right? So uh, the cache mechanism and the reference mechanism we were referring to earlier, that's this config that you should put for Gatekeeper to have a reference of Istio uh, resources. In this case, pure authentication. Here I have deployed three more constraint templates and associated constraints. Again, I should have a pure authentication strict MTLS in Istio system namespace. Uh, we prohibit anyone deploying their own peer authentication in their own namespace to bypass that. And uh, same behavior for uh, prohibiting the destination rule um, who may uh, be able to overwrite that. So what I want to do is make, making sure everything is deployed. So five constraint template now and five constraints. And what's interesting here is here, uh, Gatekeeper evaluated that in my current cluster, I have already an error, a violation. And as expected, I haven't yet deployed any peer authentication strict MTLS in Istio system. And that's what it's telling me. So let's make sure it's uh, really about that. So I'm grabbing this. Um, and actually, let me clear a little bit my console here. I'm uh, running this snippet. And here I will grab the error message of the violation, right? So I'm grabbing that from this object, uh, which is, yes, on the namespace Istio system, we need to have strict MTLS uh, peer authentication. So currently I don't have any peer authentication MTLS. So the goal here is to fix this violation. So 
what does that mean? Is currently my online boutique, my ingress gateway, my mesh is not MTLS strict, right? Uh, so it's not encrypted. It's working, but it's not encrypted uh, within the mesh for the traffic. So what I want to do is actually making sure about that. And again, Gatekeeper help me to enforce that and uh, help me to guarantee that, right? Um, now, if I uh, rerun the two previous commands, which is tell me if uh, there is any error message and violation. No, there isn't. And if I uh, list again the constraint, asking for uh, Gatekeeper to tell me if there is any other violation, we could see that everyone is at zero total violation, which is good. And uh, so now we've fixed and we added more security in our mesh. Let's continue here um, uh, the scenario where what I want to do here now is I want to add and guarantee more security. Another security feature is authorization policy. I don't know if you're familiar with authorization policy. That's a, a fine granular way, again, to tell one service could talk to this service B uh, on this specific port for this specific operation, but can't talk, cannot talk to another service C, for example. So uh, if you're familiar with Kubernetes network policy, that's uh, a complementary um, uh, set of security rules that you could have in place. Very convenient, very important to have fine granular uh, communication between your services within your mesh. Um, so what I'm doing, what I just run here is um, those two commands. Again, I'm deploying this constraint template and I'm deploying this constraint. Um, what it's doing, it's actually looking again in the Istio system namespace if I have an authorization policy with a deny all rule, right? Um, what does that mean is um, within my mesh, the entire mesh, if I deploy this object, um, my entire mesh uh, will have a deny all request. No one could talk to no one, right? Um, so uh, that could be uh, interesting, but that could be dangerous in this case, and we will demonstrate why. So here I have uh, my sixth uh, constraint template and equivalent for uh, constraint. And here, because I haven't deployed yet this object, authorization policy in uh, my Istio system, I could see that I have a, a violation. So let's double check about the error message. If I run this command, I will have the detail that in Istio system, I don't have the authorization policy. So what I want to do here is um, actually um, here deploy uh, this one to fix the constraint and violation. So if I rerun the previous column, this one should be empty. Yes. So now we are all good and we could move forward. Again, if I run this command to list all my constraints and the total violation, I don't have any more 000. So let's look now at the online boutique website, right? Uh, if you are familiar with, um, um, with Istio and authorization policy, if I hit refresh here, I will get an error back access denied because I denied all the traffic for anyone in the mesh. So especially here's the ingress gateway, but no one could talk to uh, no one here. So what I want to do is deploying fine grain uh, authorization policy. Again, I won't go too much in detail, but here what I'm deploying first is an authorization policy on the ingress gateway. And I'm having for each service fine granular uh, authorization policies in place. And if I go back to my website, if I refresh and wait a little bit, I have now online boutique back in order. And we are very happy as platform admin and Istio operator because now my entire traffic within my mesh is encrypted, strict MTLS, plus I have strict and granular uh, authorization policies in place. So uh, we are very happy and now we guarantee that anyone deploying stuff in my clusters and multi-clusters and mesh are um, compliant with governance and security in place. The last part of the demo, and we will I have room for um, some Q&A. Um, if, uh, if you have any questions, drop some notes in the chat.
Um, but here, the last part of the demo uh, will be um, about um, shifting left search guardrail and detection, right? Um, so what I want to do locally here first um, is actually, um, if I'm going to uh, to grab this um, this command here, let me just grab my snippet here. Um, so you could say Gatekeeper is fine, it's in the cluster, but can I shift left and detect as early as possible such uh, violation, right? And not waiting to deploy actually in a Kubernetes cluster. So uh, what we are going to do, if you remember, I have this local file, so I'm grabbing all my policies, my applications, my config, all my Kubernetes manifest. At what, and what I could run locally is this little snippet kept, I don't know if you are familiar with the tool, um, packaging of Kubernetes manifest, and it allows me as well to run fn eval run a function based on a container. This container is gatekeeper. So locally, without reaching any Kubernetes API, I will be I will be able to evaluate locally my Kubernetes manifest and have some um, uh, violation message, for example. Right. So in this case, if you remember, I haven't yet deployed what Ernest mentioned earlier about the constraint where I could look at any service if they are respecting uh, the convention about the service port name, right? Here, I'm violating this rule uh, we have in place in my organization. Um, and again, it's not yet deployed in Kubernetes, it's just locally. And that's very convenient because locally you could, um, you could uh, evaluate that. But uh, also uh, in this GitHub repository, we have also here a demonstration with GitHub action. So this little snippet you just saw, um, we embedded that in a GitHub action, and actually you could run and evaluate um, in your pull request, uh, in your uh, CI/CD pipeline, uh, such rules without uh, talking to any Kubernetes API, which is very, very convenient. And again, which is helping shifting left governance and security best practice you would like in your uh, organization. So back to the slide here. Uh, really quickly, so that's all about the demo. We are happy as a platform admin, uh, and now uh, we also uh, enforced um, as early as possible such uh, uh, such best practice. So again, uh, CI/CD, GitOps um, from a direct commit in GitHub, you could enforce uh, such policies uh, during a pull request, helping with having more automation before a merge, uh, after a merge as well. Uh, and in your cluster, because that's uh, where it's the most important. But again, shifting left, um, this guardrail uh, could be possible. Just some pointers for you. We hope you enjoyed uh, this concept of gatekeepers, the capabilities, and how you could enforce your own Istio and Mesh setup. Uh, we have this GitHub repository with all the resources. Just copy paste and try to adapt that for your own need. There is a lot of session this year, Istiocon 2022, about zero trust and security best practice with Istio. So feel free to leverage them. There are some pointers at the bottom of this slide. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being there. And I hope we are going to have some questions.